What is going on guys? Jels from Fitment Industries and we are here with my car. I brought it out of storage specifically for this video. So here we have it. So what we are going to do today is a video that we have attempted many, many, many times, at least probably about five times. And we're going to do it again because why not? You know, so what we're going to go over today is how to go over and measure for wheels for your car. So we've been going over some width. We're going to be going over some offset. We're going to be going over things like backspacing, front spacing, all that kind of stuff to see what wheels and how it is gone about to measure for wheels for your car. So before we go ahead and get into it, don't forget to subscribe. And if you're looking for wheels, tires and suspension, you know, after you get everything figured out here, head over to fitmentindustries.com where we got it all. And of course, don't forget about the giveaway we have going on with ESR wheels right now. That's right, you can win a free set of forged multi-piece ESR wheels. All you gotta do is pick up some merch that we have designed specifically for this giveaway. We got windbreakers, we got a hoodie, and we got a t-shirt. Every $5 spent on those items is an entry. So multiple entries available, go over to fitmentindustries.com, check it out. But let's go ahead and dive right into this. So on my 2013 Scion FRS, I am running some NKNT-03s with a size of 18 by nine and a half plus 40 for the offset with a 255-35 tire setup, some Nitto NT555 G2s. It's an absolutely perfect setup for me for what I'm looking for. I like to, um, you know, what's the word? Spirit, spirit, spiritually drive this car, which I'm not like pushing into any like limits or anything like that, but I like to have fun with it and I daily drive it during the summer. So it's a perfect setup for me. I wanted something that was gonna give me like a nice flush setup with a good sized tire, but that's what I knew going into it. So we're gonna use that kind of as a reference point to go over my FRS here. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do if you're looking at measuring for your wheels is you're gonna wanna find your back spacing for your wheels. Now what your back spacing is gonna be is the measurement from the front of your mounting surface here. So this is where your wheel, the back pad, like the mounting pad of your wheel is going to mount to your car. So this surface right here, now this is gonna be our main reference point for pretty much all of this. It's a flat surface. This is where the wheel mounts to, it's where the offset is dictated from. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a nice straight edge here Rusty but trusty, all right? You're gonna wanna compress your strut or your suspension components up to where it would be with the car on the ground. That way you don't have to worry about dealing with any like, like geometry or trigonometry or whatever the hell you might wanna call it when it's at droop. So you wanna have it where it's gonna be sitting when you're driving the car. So just put a jack underneath, get it up to point. So what you wanna do is stick that right on your mounting surface here, get it up far enough um, that it sticks up far enough above your brake and everything like that. Now what you're gonna wanna do is to find your back spacing, you're gonna find the distance that it is from the front of your mounting surface to where the main point of contact is with anything back here. So looking at this, it's gonna be, of course, our strut right here. So we're gonna measure from the back side of this to where we meet the strut here. Put our straight edge back to where we meet. And we are looking right at just about eight and five eighths. So that is going to be worst case scenario. That is like where something is meeting. So eight and five eighths inches from your surface to the back you're hitting. You don't want that. So we're gonna make a quick note of that on our whiteboard here. So after you have your back spacing figured out, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is figure out your front spacing. Now, once we have our back spacing and our front spacing, we're gonna be able to determine the width that we are going to have to go with. So to determine the front spacing, very similar concept. We're gonna be using the mounting surface of our hub, and then we're gonna measure from the inside of our fender here. So we don't wanna measure from the outside because if you're measuring from the outside, that means you still gotta worry about a tire, you gotta worry about all that other stuff. So we wanna measure from the inside to give us that extra bit of clearance. So we're gonna put that right inside of our fender there and then we're gonna take our tape measure, put it right on the mounting hub and that looks like we are right at two and a half inches. Obviously, if you wanna get very, very specific with this, you can take something like a digital caliper to get an exact measurement. If you're really looking for something to go with like, you know, like a fender to lip fitment or a very flush fitment, you wanna get that exactly dialed in. However, for this case, we're just gonna run it in inches, convert it to millimeters and run with it. So now we have our back spacing and our front spacing. What we're gonna wanna do is add both of these to get 
our width. Now, this isn't your final answer, and I'm gonna tell you why, because when you add your backspacing to your front spacing here, we're at a total answer of 11 and 1 8 inches. So, if I were to tell you, hey, guess what? You got a BRZ, or you got a FRS, and you can run an 11 half wide in the front, you're probably gonna call me nuts. And you're exactly right, because what we're gonna want to do here is knock a good chunk of that off. So where no one makes an 11 and an eighth inch wheel, all right? So that'd be an 11 inch wheel. So that's what you're gonna wanna do is knock a whole inch off of that. And that would give us right around a 10 inch wheel maximum that you're gonna be wanting to run. So when we do that, when we knock off that one inch, we get around 10 inches, which is a more reasonable width for a front wheel on these cars. Like I said, I'm running a nine and a half but I could go up to a 10 if I really, really wanted to, probably a little higher of an offset or a little less, less aggressive offset, which we'll get into in just a second here. So you might think, Jealous, you like completely missed like the diameter and everything like that. Just use your best judgment. You're not gonna run a 20 inch wheel on this car. You're not gonna run like a 22 inch wheel on this car. You're more than likely gonna run like a 17 or 18. You probably already know that going in that like, I want to run such and such diameter wheel on my car. And you're probably gonna say that for the width as well. But this is just showing if you want to do this, this is how you're gonna do it. All right, so now that we've measured our front spacing and our back spacing, we got our width of what we can run in the front. There's one more thing that is very, very important when it comes to fitment on your car that we need to determine, which is your offset. Now, if you're coming into this, you're really green at this, really fresh at this, and you're like, yo, what exactly is offset? So here is your wheel, right? Here's the inside of your car. Here's your strut, here's your hub, all that kind of good stuff. Here's the outside of your car, here's your fender. Is that a good enough drawing? I'm not an artist, all right? Right, let's say this is a 10 inch wheel. What offset determines is that if we had a 10 inch wheel with a zero offset, that the mounting pad of that wheel would be right in the middle of that wheel. So you have five inches of front spacing, five inches of back spacing on your wheel. Now that's different from the back spacing and front spacing on your car, this is from the wheel. So it's five inches from the mounting surface to the back and five inches from the mounting surface to the front of the wheel. So when we start to get into offset, more commonly you're gonna probably see offsets like plus 22, for example, plus 35, plus 38, plus 40, all those typical offsets. What that means is the offset distance in millimeters from the center point of this wheel to where that mounting surface actually might be. So if you have a positive offset, that means that this mounting surface is going to move towards the outside of the wheel or the outside of the car, meaning that the wheel itself is going to sink into the car a little more. When you get a negative offset, or a lower offset, you are pushing that mounting surface back towards the inside of the car, pushing the wheel out. So you're still maintaining, let's say a 10 inch wheel in the width, but when you're moving this mounting surface, you're getting a more aggressive or less aggressive fitment. So this is definitely something that we need to determine here, because obviously you're not gonna run a zero offset on a 10 inch wide wheel on this car, unless you're going absolutely crazy over fenders, camber, a whole bunch of good stuff. So to determine what offset you're going to need. Let's go ahead and change this to what I'm running right now, which is a nine and a half inch wheel, because that's what I know, that's what I feel comfortable running after knocking that inch off of our total width and everything like that. We know that we have enough backspacing of eight and five eighths inches before we run into anything, but of course we gotta take in tire to consideration and all that kind of stuff. So what we really, really wanna find out, right, is where we want this part of the wheel to meet up with the car. And this is gonna change depending on what type of fitment you want. Do you want, a, do you want a fender to lip fitment? Do you want more of a flush fitment? Or do you want something like tucked if you're going on air or something like that? This end point is where you want to know where that's gonna land and that is going to determine your offset. So to determine what offset we are going to go with, we are going to need to figure out what the front spacing is to find the back spacing, not of the car, but of the wheel and once you have your back spacing of the wheel and your width you can then determine your offset now to do that all right we know that we have a 9.5 inch wheel so nine and a half inch wide wheel is what i've decided to go with now i grabbed the two and a half inches for the front spacing from what we measured so when we took our straight edge measured from the hub mounting to the front spacing where we wanted the wheel to end up, we got two and a half inches. So if we take the nine and a half 
total width minus two and a half. Quick math, right? You get a lovely number of seven inches. Now, that's saying that we are gonna have roughly about a seven inch back spacing from this mount in point of the wheel hub to the back of the wheel. And I'm gonna teach you a little, a little secret here, right? Fitment Industries has a lot of awesome tools. And if you go to our website, we have this awesome calculator right here. So when you find these numbers, you can go ahead to the calculator, plug in that I have a nine and a half inch wide wheel, plug in the back spacing of seven inches, and boom, bop, bang, gives us an offset of plus 44. Now, Remember where we measured that from? We measured it from the inside of the fender liner to give us that little bit of room. Plus 44 or plus 45 would be a very conservative setup with a nine and a half wide wheel on this car. I wanted to get more of a flush setup, so I went with a plus 40 because I knew I was gonna be running a little more of a thicker tire. Now, a lot of people run a plus 35 with a nine and a half on these cars. So this gets us right into that ballpark. Now, like I said, you can get very, very technical with this. You can break out the digital caliper. You can break out all the different steps to find exactly what fitment. If you're looking for that perfect fender to lip fitment, you can do that using this exact same method. You just need to know where this part of the wheel is going to end up on this car. Find it relative to the mounting surface. Get that front spacing subtracted by the total width of the wheel that you want to go with or that you can go with. Find your back spacing of the wheel, plug it into our calculator, now, if you end up getting a weird number like I did, like plus 44.43, whatever it might be, you're gonna have to obviously round to the nearest offset. So I could have gone up with a plus 40, plus 38 for in my instance, would have gave me just a little more flush, probably perfect. If you don't want to go through all of this, if you don't wanna get the car in the air, you don't wanna do the math, you don't wanna find the front space, you don't wanna find the back space, you don't wanna find the offset, all that. You just wanna see real life examples and copy paste, head on over to fitmentindustries.com gallery where there are over 20,000 vehicles that list their exact width, their exact diameter, their offset, if they have any rubbing issues, if they had to do fender rolling, if they had to remove fender liners, what tire size they're running, and of course, what suspension they're running. It's an absolutely fantastic tool and it saves you all the time of doing this. But if you want to do it, this is how you go about doing it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this helped you in your journey to find the fitment that you're looking for. And of course, if you need wheels, tires, or suspension, hit up fitmentindustries.com. We'll see you later. Peace.